when it comes to social media platforms, free speech and the spread of misinformation are divided by an extremely thin line. Many fail to understand the difference. Sometimes even the social media platforms themselves. And Twitter has been one of the most controversial social media platforms when it comes to this. Now, the social media platform's latest move has sparked a massive storm. The Twitter account of leading U.S. virologist Dr. Robert Malone has been banned. Now, Dr. Robert Malone is the inventor of the mRNA technology, which has been used to vaccinate millions of people. But shockingly, Twitter has suspended this same scientist for spreading alleged misinformation on COVID vaccines. Now, Dr. Malone had over 500,000 followers on Twitter. He was removed after he shared a video about supposed harmful effects of the Pfizer jab. In a tweet, Dr. Malone has noted that Pfizer's six-month data showed that its COVID vaccine caused more illness than it prevents. He also pointed out the flaws in Pfizer's trial, both in design and execution. In a video, he explained the harms feared to be coming from the Pfizer mRNA vaccine for COVID-19. Twitter so far has not commented on the move. Despite being involved with the development of the mRNA technology, Dr. Malone has become an outspoken critic of mass vaccination. Both the Pfizer and Moderna jabs are built on mRNA technology, which uses genetic engineering to create antibodies. Dr. Malone, however, says that there is not enough testing in place to warrant mass vaccination. The sudden suspension of Dr. Malone's account has raised doubts about Twitter's authority and credibility. Malone's followers have slammed the social media website for silencing the voice of a top scientist and doctor without a fact check. Now, after a weekend of muted New Year's Eve celebrations, the citizens of the United States are facing the uncertainty of 2022 as the country continues to battle another COVID wave. In the latest, the Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin has tested positive for COVID-19. According to the statement released by the Department of Defence, Secretary Austin is exhibiting mild symptoms. Austin will remain at home, quarantined for the next five days in accordance with the new guidelines. Now, last week, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had shortened the recommended isolation period for people testing positive from 10 days to five days. Now, if the person infected is asymptomatic, now, Secretary Austin also informed that he last met with President Joe Biden on the 21st of December and had tested negative that morning. As the new year begins with a massive influx of COVID-19 cases, healthcare services are already feeling the impacts. Healthcare workers have been exhausted by several surges, and now many are getting sidelined during the rapid rise of the Omicron variant, which remains the most contagious strain to have hit the United States. Amid the mounting concerns, America's top medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, has warned against more hospitalizations in the coming weeks. Say one thing, we've got to be careful about that, because even if you have a less of a percentage of severity, when you have multi, multi, multi fold more people getting infected, the net amount is you're still going to get a lot of people that are going to be needing hospitalization. Cases are soaring, hospitals are reeling, fear is intensifying, and students are preparing to return to school starting this week. Now, students in the United States are set to resume in-person learning in schools which are reopening at full capacity. Masks are compulsory and some schools are planning to vastly ramp up tests among students and staff. Meanwhile, several teachers are asking officials to utilize distance learning while the latest wave is at its peak. A small number of schools have even switched to remote learning. At least five metro area school districts will begin remote learning this week. And in Washington, D.C., public schools will remain shut until Thursday due to the winter storms. But the states like Massachusetts and New York have rejected the request from the teachers union for remote learning. So for more on this, we have our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, joining us live from New York City. Hello to you, Susan. Now, caution by Dr. Fauci and the opening up uh, of 
the schools as an example as an example he says cautious but he sees hope That's right. Uh, that, that is really the sentiment right now among healthcare professionals as well as Dr. Fauci uh, that the Omicron variant, despite being highly transmissible, uh, it is sort of milder and people are treating it hopefully as, uh, as being sort of like a flu. And you know, we talk about the opening of schools and just like anything else, it's really a highly polarized issue. And the question is, you know, people are asking whether or not it's safe to send kids to school, but then the other question on the other side of the coin is whether or not families and parents are really prepared to keep uh, children at home for at-home learning, uh, and whether or not they have the resources or not to really accommodate something like that with their jobs, uh, with uh, childcare, uh, and with, you know, everything else that goes into that. Here in New York City, uh, the newly elected mayor, Eric Adams, said that we have, quote unquote, already lost two years of education due to COVID-19, meaning that really at home learning uh, and remote learning is really not as effective as being in classrooms. Uh, we've had officials say that schools are the safest place to be. But on the other hand, teachers unions uh, have said that, you know, they prefer to stay at home. And that's something that has been very controversial, you know, the unions fighting with the government. So, you know, some of it is, is a play on politics. Others is personal pre preference for safety. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think health experts believe that, uh, you know, Omicron is something with the current uh, resources that are at hand can be combated without shutting down schools. Right. At least in some, on, uh, some districts right. have decided to take measures. Yeah. Absolutely. Now on uh, Lloyd Austin being infected with the uh, coronavirus. What do we know about his status? Can you talk to about uh, talk to us about him declaring his uh, status of being COVID positive and also him quarantining himself? And do we know his vaccination status? Right. So Lloyd Austin said that the last time he met with President Joe Biden was on uh, January uh, on. Uh, on the 21st basically and um and and that was uh he said about five or eight days before he felt the first symptoms uh of of covid uh so uh he hopes that he was not transmissible uh he did not go to the white house um, after that, uh, he said that he'll be quarantining for five days. These are the new CDC guidelines as opposed to the uh, former 10 days uh, quarantine recommendations. Uh, he said that he has been vaccinated and he also said that he's going to be carrying out his uh, meetings virtually moving forward. Uh, of course, the CDC said that they are going to uh, put forth more recommendations uh, and make uh, and have more clarity on what quarantine gu guidelines are going to be uh, this coming week. Uh, there had been some misunderstandings on, you know, why from the 10 days to the five days and how that's going to move forward. Uh, but uh, that's what, at least in, ter uh, in the case of Lloyd Austin, he said that he's going to be uh, quarantining for five days and then we'll see what happens after that. Right, Susan, thank you very much for being with us on this broadcast, bringing us all from the U.S. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.